You're listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. Presented by CMH Heli Skiing and Fat Tire Amber Ale. Henrik Harlow, welcome to the show, man. Thank you very much. I'm very glad that you're here. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited as well. First time I'm doing anything like this. So is this your first? Very... Is this your first podcast? I done one before, but in person. So this is the first time I'm doing it over the internet. And yeah, fair enough. You know what? I that's funny because that's the opposite for me. Really, I've done like seven years, and almost all of them have been in person. And now that COVID's here, it's uh, it's by the internet, so it's kind of like backwards. Was it was it a Swedish podcast that you did? Yeah, was it exactly? Was it the Husky podcast? It was with the uh, Ride Brain, Ride with Brain. Simon Chernstrom. Mm. I don't know that one. It was, it was all in Swedish. That's that's probably why. <laughs> I don't see. Yeah, <laughs> my Swedish isn't that good <laughs> at all. <laughs> at all. That's okay. Well, right on, man. So, uh, how's how's life been treating you for the last little while? How was uh, how was the COVID break for you? It was definitely pretty crazy. Uh, I was definitely affected by it, like, but as far as my health and like everything for my skiing and everything, it's been really, really good. Yeah, I feel like I'm. I had a lot of time to think through a lot of things and just haven't really stopped. It didn't slow me down for training and trying to work for skiing. So yeah, I think uh, I've learned a lot from it and I'm really, really happy where I'm at right now. My head space and physical, mentally, all. Yeah, I, I feel really good right now. That's so I'm stoked. That's awesome, man. Because you've got a lot going on. Like you always have a lot going on, but you've got like a a lot, a lot going on. Um, you know, just talking Kinda. to yeah, right. Oh, it, it depends. Like, I, I got got a lot going on with and skiing, but that's all that's going on. <laughs> but even like I don't outside of skiing, I like have nothing going on really. So <laughs> it's just all skiing. Yeah, but yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. So you've got a lot going on within skiing. Just talking to uh, Raf, who uh, your manager, who set us up. Uh, just having conversations with him. Um, you know, he gets a lot of like the the back end stuff done, which I'm sure is really helpful for you. So you can just focus on the skiing, right? Very much. Yeah, it's very appreciated that because that's the ultimate goal for me. <laughs> are you are you not a big email paperwork guy? No, I wouldn't say so. I. <laughs> Yeah, I because as soon as I start going on it, I'm like start thinking about skiing and I start thinking about yeah the next move and then yeah I have a hard time to sit for too long of a period with emails and yeah all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. so it's good that you got a you got a team. Uh, so we'll, yeah. I want to get right into salute. Your, yes, sir. Your, your movie coming up. So, like, give me a little, uh, give me a little um, overview, like a little summary of, of what it is. So, it is my third two-year project in a row, and it's a collaboration together with Bug Visionaries as well as Step Production or Step Studios, and yeah, it's a, uh, it's probably my biggest personal movie project that I've been a part of and it's been super wicked we had two amazing years of filming unfortunately got a little bit cut off earlier because of the covid and all that stuff so unfortunately a lot of plans that we had for the springtime got changed but other than that most of the crew has been like super healthy during the whole filming. Everybody been super positive and I feel like the vibe during the whole journey has been so amazing. And it was definitely a salute to the skiing and I'm just so blessed to have experienced what I got to experience the last two years. Is that where the title came from? Just a salute to skiing? Is that was that or was that something you had planned in in advance? 
Yeah, it's a movie title that I had talked about for a few years. I remember talking about it with Brady Perrin a few years ago while we made Be Inspired. And it just stuck to me, like, because I always, I'm just so thankful for everything that skiing has taught me and brought to me and everybody that did it before me. So it's like a lot of meanings within the word. So it's just a big salute to everybody that's in skiing, that's done skiing, that's going to do skiing in the future. And yeah, just a big respect to everybody and homage. When you're like setting up or thinking about like a project like this or, or anything that you're doing within your, within skiing, do you usually get like an idea like that, that like kind of sits in your head and just kind of develops? And is that kind of how you focus yourself based around like that one idea? Or do you just kind of go for it and just see where things fall into place? A little bit of both. I would say I definitely am pretty good at visioning like a final product or something like I always when I travel to somewhere whether I'm going to be shooting for a movie or just to edit or anything like that I basically like if I traveling on airplane I like come up with a song that I'm going to use and like start like visioning a full piece with that song and then as soon as I arrive to the spa, I put just a song in a timeline and then try to fill in each day into that timeline and build. So I, I feel like I have a lot of visions going on already going into it, but then obviously a lot of plans and everything can change and I improvise as it goes and I'm always open and like pretty easy with changes. Because I know they happen a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. I was actually going to ask you about that. Is like, um, so some people will have all the footage, and then maybe they'll have a song that is just like I know some some uh, movie companies like a new a new song they'll end up getting uh, from a uh, like a recording company that'll want to like promote it in a certain way or to a certain market, right? So they say, hey, we'll give you this song for cheap, or we'll give you this song to use. Um, throw it in your movie and then it's up to the editor to kind of figure out all right how are all these clips going to fit into that right which is one route but you kind of already have this idea like I just want to use this song because this song is dope and then you're going to try and figure out what you're going to put and then not only just the clips that you have you find a spot for them but do you like approach like your tricks or approach like I want to get this shot to go at this part of the song do you think about it that like specifically yeah, yeah I definitely think think of it like that. Like that's like exactly like I uh, I just listen to like a song like I was saying while traveling to a location and then kind of feel the vibe that I want to portray on that trip. And then like whether it's like a grimy, a little bit slower vibe, then I want to like showcase a little bit like slower, grimy tricks, and then. If it comes up like a little bit speeded part in that song, then that's when I would like to like start going a little bit wilder and like bring out some crazy tricks. But then uh, that that was like like back to the movie, like a little bit different because I knew with the movie, like music rights and all this is like not the easiest. I knew that the soundtrack wasn't gonna be like what I'm like necessarily envisioning during the process but still it was super nice like even though like in the movie is not those songs that i like was filming for like i always still in my head and like on my computer have like a rough and yeah, rough version that's you've like, got your own personal like personal like athlete edit for your own so like if you can't get the licensing for those songs you'll still make that edit for yourself so you can watch them and see how it works out yeah yeah exactly <laughs> and i feel like that like pushes my skiing so much because it like motivates me so much to like try fill in the blanks of this edit and then at the end like when i give the footage to the like step guys in this case and like stuff like this, like then I feel like still like it can fit to any other tracks, but it's just like a 
motivation for me yeah to like it's the vibe yeah. right it's 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 the vibe like do you go when you go to the step guys you're like all right this is divi gone to the point where you're like this is the song that i had in my head when i threw these track when i hit these tricks or i did this these th- when i got this footage and then do you explain to them kind of the vibe that you're feeling? This is the track I wanted to use, but we can't use it. So let's find something similar. And then do you have that kind of conversation with them? Yeah, I definitely had that conversation. But also with this movie, I really wanted them to put their vision into it. Since like, because uh, it was like 2011 when me and Phil kind of started our own path and we started making our own movies so it's been like nine years in a row except there's been like two two two-year projects before but like it's like all been like the way i vision my skiing and like want my skiing to be portrayed so then with this i have like so good of a relation with the step guys and i trust in their vision as well super like very much so with this project particularly, I wanted to like maybe have it look a little bit different and have it look the way they saw it, mm-hmm. but just making sure that like my skiing was like the way I wanted it. But it's been cool. Like it was the first time in super long that I was like kind of just giving away my footage and be like, please treat it nicely, <laughs> and like just like didn't want to be too involved. And like have my opinions too much with the editing process yeah and i think i think that's very cool because you you can definitely see it's like a different look and like a different feel than you got in from my previous movies yeah that's fascinating because we like what you just said is like you have this vision about what you want to what you, how you want it to be and how you want it to look but then at the same time you're able to step away from all of that energy that you put into it and just say okay here you go have at it <laughs> do they send you like yeah. you got, i'm sure you guys have like like meetings and stuff where they'll just send you a quick little update or or an edit and be like what do you think about this or what are your opinions on that i'm sure that's kind of a thing that you've got to yeah. do. yeah and like originally i was supposed to go over to la to their studio for one week in june and two weeks in august but then with all this like covid stuff that obviously wasn't the case (laughs) yeah but then it was super nice because they had this like vimeo preview thing so they could send over like a preview and then you just press on the screen at that particular time code and then you just add a comment like maybe add two more frames of the outrun or in run or slow-mo a little bit different on this clip and so i was definitely able to still have a good input but then was at the same time, like I was saying before, trying to like not be too uh, influential. Or, like, just wanted to make sure that my my skiing was like shown the way I wanted. But then I wanted it to be the stepped feel that they was creating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the Raf sent me the trailer. It looks sick. It looks really, really sick. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's. I haven't even seen it. You haven't seen the trailer <laughs> either. Oh, buddy. It's awesome. You're going to be stoked. Do you, um, uh, uh, how long was it? It's about like 30 something minutes, I think. Did the, I think Raf was telling me? Yeah, it's been uh, going back and forth, but I think the final is 32 minutes with the credit. Yep. Because, uh, w- like, we were talking, and he said that um, with the amount of footage that you had, you could easily have turned it into, like, you know, almost twice as long is there a reason why you kept it yeah kept it tight uh it was just their vision like they saw like how much of like really really good footage we had and they just i think they just wanted to do like a movie that was like all super hits basically (laughs) but but yeah for sure it's been the been different but sick like i never really experienced like something like this before like there is a few shots that are like some of my favorite shots ever but like maybe the focus of the camera goes a little bit off or 
the light lighting is not really perfect or there's like small little things like this that before I would do anything like just go into the editing program and turn up the brightness or like yeah. make it super grainy or anything just to put in just to show the action but it's been super cool and a uh, big learning experience to see that like like you sometimes just just for it to fit the whole vibe of the movie movie and like everything to like some clips didn't even make it that like you gotta, are you got to leave them out and and turn them into that um that athlete edit for your own computer or an instagram band, yeah man that's, that's instagram stuff right there right you can show yeah. you can show those uh like amazing sh- amazing action shots that are like this should have been in the movie but because of that little mini bit of uh, uh focus or something is off you can put it on instagram and be like this is what didn't make it and people will be like whoa it blows their mind right yeah no for sure that and yeah at first it felt like crazy like oof like these are like so big to me but then they're like your babies right they're like your they're like your babies like your little children exactly especially because i am like i care and everything i do is so so much about skiing and like i think through like every trick so much and like puts like so much of my heart and soul into every trick I'm basically throwing. So then at first it feels like crazy, like, Oh, this is not going to be like in it, but it's like super sick. But yeah, I, I fully respect it. And I think now the like final product came out so nice because of these things. And it's again, like a new look on it that I haven't had before. And like you say, like I already have, a full like bonus self edit <laughs> yeah. that I will release at some point and yeah right yeah it's not it's not like the shots is like lost and like never gonna be shown and I was just although like I can I kind of do that quite a bit like I have a lot of edits on my computer that I've made that just like didn't really feel right to post and then now it's like six years later and they still just on my computer and like. Oh man! Like maybe I posted this year, and you're, oh you're, maybe there's so many people listening to this right now going, "Ma, ah, release that!" It's like it's like <laughs> um, oh, it's like that Wu Tang album that the evil guy, the Martin Shkreli, bought for like two million, yeah. and no one can listen to it. It's the same shit, man. I know for a fact you want to listen to that album so badly. Think about all of the oh, people yeah. that love you as a skier that want to see that stuff. So you got to put it out. Or or uh, put it up for auction and see who wants to buy it for. Her. <laughs> you you could do the same yeah, thing. No, Write a contract and sell it off to someone so they can never they can never they can do whatever they want with it. But now I'll probably at some point just start uploading. Like I started, I think last year or two years ago when I started my YouTube channel. I released a few edits like that, like one from Australia and one from ting france that that had been like just on my computer for three years or something but just waiting yeah i got got a few more that at some point i will yeah like some sometimes it's also because it has like tricks that i haven't released yet that i want to like oh. bring out for co- for contest and stuff like this so it can also be like a meaning because of that like i don't want to show because I haven't showed this trick yeah. and I want to keep it fresh for That's cool, man. You don't, want, you, or... you don't want to show your hand. That's really cool. Do you have a few of those already? Like, still? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's sick. Um, so that's another thing that makes you kind of unique is that not only are you, like, one of the best, if not the best, comp skier in the world, but you also have time for... a two-year film project there's not a lot of guys that are able to go and be the top of their game in both aspects at the same time right like it takes up a lot it like it takes up a lot of actual time right um like i said we were chatting with raf he's like i don't know he told me he told me where where he had gone last year and he said what was it it was uh see if i can find it here anyways he went from like place to place to place to place like every time it was Atlanta, Minnesota, Europe, X Games, Baker, uh, et cetera, et cetera, with like all within comps within the middle. Like, does that not get like 
overwhelming for you? No, it's just awesome. It's just like every time it's opportunities and when it's changing from filming to competition, it's just like changing the... Uh, it's like a refresh. It's like that. a refreshment from one thing, right? Like when you're in comp mode and you yeah. need a little bit of a break, you go into like film mode, and then Ex when you're exhausted from film mode, you can get focused back into comp mode. Yeah, exactly. And I I love skiing so much. So it's not like it, one thing is not as fun as the other, and they both complement the other one. And yeah, filming pushes me to learn new tricks that I want to bring out for contest and contest, like making sure that like I'm staying sharp so I can bring out new tricks for filming. And they, they go back and forth. Like I always like use the one for the other one to like better my skiing. And yeah, again, like it's, it's no way of getting burnt out on something that you love so much like this. Right. Is it like, is there much of a, a like a mental change between the two? Like, are you able to like flip a switch? You know what I mean? Like, um, like when you approach like your mindset when you approach like a like a like a big comp, you're in the finals, versus say you know you're at the top of an in run for a trick that you'd been thinking about on the airplane, listening to your tunes, right? Listening to listen to that song you've had in your head and you've been thinking about it, right? Is there is there a difference between the two? Are you more relaxed? Or are you kind of the same? I think I'm sort of the same, actually. Like, I, I might be a bit more... I'm a pretty competitive person from the beginning. Like, i done so many sports growing up and always loved competing and feeding of it. Like, I, whenever I get the pressure, that's when I ski the best. So, sort of the same, too, while filming, but not competitive. And I never really, while competing or filming is competitive with anybody else but just like very competitive with myself and making sure that i get exactly what i want but yeah <laughs> yeah you just you don't you don't really get overwhelmed it's just kind of like because i know some people can like focus in on competition mode where like this is everything and then they can turn that off and then when they're out they can be loose and free right but um, based on what you just said and kind of witnessing what you how you act, I think you're pretty much the same across the board, right? Like you said, skiing is skiing, which yeah, which is crazy. And, that and I think, I think like for sure, I just like never really switch it off. It's kind of my thing. It's like the on switch is like on at all times because I I won't get burned out. I love it so much. So it's like. I don't really ever see the reason of switching off that focus. So I'm like, as soon when I'm out in the slopes, I like it's my focus. When I get off the slopes, it's all my focus to feel better the next day I'm skiing. And it's like, I, I feel like I'm like always like in. Yeah, I never <laughs> really switch it off. Yeah. And that's interesting. Like, so I'll bring up what we were talking about uh, before we started airing. I, put, I that clip that I played for you. Um, I'm gonna send. I'll send you the video clip of that. But uh, it was like the, a couple weeks ago. Uh, you were at the top of the in run, and you were talking to Tanner, uh, and he was like, I guess, kind of hyping you up a little bit. Or it was almost like in. It was almost like he was being hyped up, even though he was standing with you at the top of your run. Uh, and he was like blown away about how just calm and like confident you were. How did how do you feel like hearing about stuff like that from from a guy that you know is not only a friend but kind of like the guy you looked up to? Yeah, it's so 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 unreal, and I'm like so appreciative for everything that Tanner has done for the sport and for me and. Yeah, he is, he, I, I don't really, like, I'm, like, so speechless always and, like, so thankful for him. He motivates me, like, crazy all the way from the very beginning of my career to right now. He's, like, ass motivated and, like, yeah, and to have him up at X Games together with me for that one particular night was, was a dream come true. 
honestly, like, like I grew up watching him, studying him and like impersonating and like trying to do everything that he did. And like, yeah, get, being so inspired by him. So then have him up there when it was like the first, that was like, that was my first X game medal. Was that, was it a nose butter triple 16? I think he was saying. Yeah, the nose butt triple 16 night in the big air 2013 and like one of the biggest moments ever for me because yeah i dreamed of again x games medals but then that dream seemed a little bit further away at like the two years before that but then i got together with phil and tanner for educational style movie in 2012 and didn't really compete so much and then like just perfected my skill and my craft a lot and kind of started really doing the nose buttering thing and then came back the next year to the competitions and brought the nose butter and then yeah that whole night with like was probably gonna win without the nose butter triple but then it was just that time when all spotlights were on tanner was up there seaton and Vinny Gagne as well on top and like yeah, everything was just perfect. So then to throw it out at that time it was it was wicked. And also one thing that I wanna say about that too, like I was so like afraid and careful with doing a triple in general. Like I had I hadn't done a triple cork or any triple flip before that because I was like afraid of like i just didn't want to inspire and push the youth necessarily to like go straight for triples because i believe that there was and still is so so many double cork variations that we haven't even perfected yet and then i was like oh but and then also knew that i could do a triple but then like having tanner at the top, like being like the most core and most caring about the sport and the culture and all that, him being the one at the top hyping me up, like do this triple because you know you got it, you know, like so it was that was like exactly what I needed to like just switch and like okay, as you do this triple because I know I got it. <laughs> yeah, and that's what he said too. Is that you just kind of casually looked around and looked. He's like, "You got this." And you kind of casually looked around and looked at him. And went, "I know." <laughs> and he was like, "What?" <laughs> and then smash. That's that's fascinating. That um, you kind of think about like the progression of the sport because you're someone who is on the cutting edge of progression, right? You're you're one of the people that are moving it forward, and the fact that you're like consciously aware of not going too far like slowing it down and seeing what else is is like possible before you get to that point like it's not a race it's more of the journey i think that's really fascinating thank you yeah again i think it's just because i i care and i love this so much so i think every move and every trick has an impact and for sure i know like myself growing up being super fan and seeing what tanner and like all these guys were doing like that that was what i was gonna try learn what my idol was doing so i hope that like people that are the next generation the young kids that like watching me and the other guys that they want to do what we do and so it's like yeah it's for sure important that we do the right move in a way like yeah not set not set like in a crazy way that like people is gonna like okay we can just spin like crazy and not grab instead like yeah have some flavor to it yeah that's really fascinating do you so have you had do you have like convert like obviously you've thought about this a lot you know because you're in that position that tanner was with you but with a whole new generation of kids who are coming up and you've actually probably spent some time like thinking about this. Um, do you have discussions about this? Like with other athletes or like guys, like guys in your crew or people that you ski with? Like, I know these are conversations that come up all the time and not everybody can spin and do what you do. Right. But 
um, like what are kind of some of their opinions on the sort sort of thing? Like, have you met people? Like, have you had conversations with people that are like, hell yeah, let's go for like a quint, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I haven't had conversation about that necessarily, but I try as much as I can to just like talk about it with everybody that like it's like up to us we are like in charge and like have the steering wheel in our hand and like it's up to us to make sure that like it stays the way we want it to be like i still like i push so much to myself as well to like make sure that it's like staying the same as the sport that the 10 year old me fell in love with instead of alpine racing hockey soccer and like all these other sports it was like something so unique and like cool about this sport and i want the kids that grow up right now to like see that as well that you can like be a little bit alternative or whatever like you 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 can be a little bit different and like that's the things that i really love with this sport and i want to make sure that it like stays like that as well and not too strict and like too like stagnant yeah that I, s- I want it to be like super fly and like super free and like everybody to like do their own thing and but still obviously like that doesn't mean that you can't be focused and can be serious about your craft like for sure everybody gotta like yeah yeah because you're you're like you're it. quite full on with with um your training and your strength like another thing that we spoke about the raff was the other day i was just he was just he's one of your biggest fans right i was just chatting with him about him and he's like man he travels so much and i don't know when he has times he goes from here to here and he films and he does comps and he's he's in the gym with the swedish team and he's crushing all the strength records all, all like the strength uh exercises and stuff like base because you're because not only do you do all of this just for skiing um and i think what a lot of people maybe see is the skiing and the film parts but they don't actually see a lot of the work that goes in behind it you know what i mean like with instagram and stuff it's helping recently like you look at tanner every other one of his insta posts is him riding his bike right um yeah but when it comes to like you know fitness and like training and that sort of thing you know you're not only are you you know a filming athlete but you're you know a comp athlete but also like an olympian right so you get the opportunity yeah. to train with your country and like in and take advantage of all of those facilities. Um, is that like uh, when when it comes to like your health and your and, and and training? How much is that a part? Like, how much do you dedicate to that? Is it just like a preseason sort of thing, or are you constantly working? Even though, like you said, you're I said you're going from comps to filming, from comps to filming. There's not a lot of time <clears throat> in between. No. But, so basically, yeah. What I was just yeah, saying is, like, when do you again, when do you have time for like training? Do you set off like like uh, like a week here or a week there, or are you constantly like, oh, there's a there's a gym in this hotel. I'm gonna go down and do some squats. I try as much as I can, and I feel like I'm getting better at at it as time goes on. Like I feel like just more and more. I like think about like for sure everything you do has an effect like everything you're gonna eat is gonna affect your energy and like strength level and everything like that as well as well as training like the more i train the better i'm gonna feel but mainly it's like always back to like i basically just do all this for skiing Mm -hmm. like i want to feel as good as i possibly can skiing i want to be able to recover as fast as possible I want to have the maximum energy. Like I, I just try more and more to like really hit what is my highest potential, like within my craft. So like everything, I I think everything has an impact. Like everything you do is going to affect the way you ski. Mm -hmm. Do you find that working with this, like the Swedish team or like, or with the like coaches and stuff, um, they have like a specific impact like do you do you take what they give you and then bring it on the road with you or or is it um or do you have kind of like an idea of what works for you or do you really kind of rely on some of their programs i think i definitely f- 
follow my own program, but get very inspired and influenced by the team. And yeah, I'm super, super thankful because they have definitely brought a lot to me and helped me so much. And like, yeah, I'm super, super thankful and appreciative for everything that the Swedish team has given me. And I think it has sparked a lot of motivation and ideas to like push it even further do they have like <clears throat> like um camps for like the slope and, and the half pipe team or do they just call you in and you have to like start working out with like the downhill team or like the biathlon athletes you know what i mean is it like a no is it like a big group of everybody yeah it's uh mainly just uh the the free skiers that we train together with we always for like eight years had like one physical test in the springtime and one physical in the fall time. And that's kind of how we started. And then everybody was just on their own program, but then did these physical tests. And then after a few years, we like started realizing like maybe we should work for, for these, or like these exercises that we do all these tests and to like see what that does, if it impacts our skiing and, like all this and then we all started again more into that more healthy and like just wanted to push that further and now it's just an awesome group to get together with and we all just want to train and get stronger so we can ski harder and better is there is there and is there competition between the different uh disciplines like the downhill skiers or like the cross like skier cross skiers or like the half pipe skiers do you guys like when you're in there and you're like doing your fitness tests and stuff do you have like little wagers or little battles with each other to see who's who's better no we usually don't do them together oh, with no. the other guys but but we know we just do we do together with the snowboard team but mainly I think they always just kind of like look down <laughs> on us in a way like they never think like that we are in so good of a physical form. So then it always is a little extra motivation to like show that like we are serious and we like do this as much, if not even more than a lot of other people. Yeah. And I, it, it definitely like motivates me to like, come through to like these official like places and like have my pants sagging my <laughs> when I had the dreadlocks the like big hoodies and all come through and like look a lot different and it like motivates me to like even push it further on that level and then like when it's when it's business time or whatever you want to say when it's time to go then I just show and I yeah I you, you I'm decent at it, so it's like it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that, um, like, you're 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 so well known now, but I'm sure even now still, do people get like they have that perspective of you? They see the dreads, they see the baggy clothes and stuff. They're like, oh, this skid, dirtbag skier, whatever. Without without, they, and that's just what they think about you. Do you know? Do you still kind of get that opinion from certain people that you meet? And they're like, oh, this guy. And then maybe they find out what you can actually do, and they're like, holy crap. Yeah, for sure. It happens every day. You're smiling. Does that, do you actually enjoy that sort of thing when people get the wrong opinion of you? I love it. Yeah. And I start, I've like learned to love it more and more. Like I feed off it right now so much and it, it's awesome. <laughs> like just, just now I came last night from Sasfe, Switzerland. I was skiing there for three and a half week and Every run you ski over towards the park, you like go on a cat track and it's all these like different race course going down. And I, I see everybody like looking at me, smiling, laughing. And I, I just smile back at them and like listening to some nice hip hop music and just like rapping the lyrics to them. And like, <laughs> you just like flexing a little bit in front of them. And then like, yeah, it's funny. They all, I, I get always the looks and yeah, I don't, it doesn't, doesn't matter. get to me in a bad way at all. If anything, it only f feeds me the, or fuel the fire. <laughs> Do you ever go poach their courses? No, but I did think about it. 
because I, I did grow up uh, alpine racing quite a bit. Yeah. And I, I loved it when I was younger, not as much as I loved free skiing, but I thought it was really fun. And I, I just said it to Noah Albaradejo, who is my really good friend, because I, I always talk to the Swedish team a little bit. I know some of the riders there. And I was telling him, like, maybe I should just go and ask if I could take their skis for one run and just ride the course and see what it feels like. But I didn't do it. But that that thought came across my mind for sure. And yeah. <laughs> maybe that's a thought that'll stay in there on those airplane rides, man. Maybe maybe that's like uh, something down the future, right? Because you, you are at the top of your game. You're physically strong. You said you eat well and you pay attention to your body, right? So being that you had that that um early early training you know it's it's in there right do you know when someone learns something when they're like 20 years old versus when they've been doing it since they were 10 Mm -hmm. no matter what the person that learned when they were 20 they're never going to be as skilled or finessed as the person that figured it out when they were 10 right so there's a possibility that you know because you did it when you're at a young age and you've been skiing all the time you may just pick it up right like you look at like <laughs> Michaela Schifrin, who obviously was a, like a slalom racer, but then started going to like GS and like Super G, and she started dominating, right? Maybe it's something like that for yourself too. Maybe you just strap on a pair of uh, skinny carving skis, race skis. Maybe you'll start blowing people away, and it'll be something fun for you to do. Do you see that happening? Yeah. No, <laughs> not as a as a career or anything. I was gonna. Serious. I was hoping you were gonna say yes, and that was gonna be the uh, like the clickbait for this episode. It'd be yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be Henrik Harlow switches to downhill racing. <laughs> he hangs up the park skis. Yeah, no, but I could definitely see it. Just doing it for ski control. Like I believe that it has helped me so much that got the base from alpine racing and just like my edge control got so much better because of that. And I would love to do some more racing because it's, yeah, like who, who was who doesn't like to go fast and go through a course is like go-kart. Yeah. But as long as I don't have to like, as long as I don't have a time to like compare myself with others so I can ride with like big baggy clothes still, but you you still like perfect my carvings i am fully up for that yeah right and then drop into the course switch at, at the, the second time through would you ever yeah, would you ever would you ever consider going kind of the route that like tanner and dirty took recently with uh, like some big mountain riding you know because i've seen some i've seen some edits with you like skiing alaska and stuff and you you know like you said you got that base when you're a racer, man. Every everyone I've ever met that raced when they were a kid are technically solid skiers. Whether it's um, skiing groomers, whether it's you know doing what you do, whether it's skiing big mountain stuff, like they're technically strong and they know how to ski. They know how to use their body over the different terrain. Like I think you could do well. Have you thought about maybe getting a wild card or asking for a wild card? If or if they approached you, would you say hell yeah? Why not? I have actually two times gotten wild card for Free World Tour in Andorra because I live in Andorra right. and I've, I've been around. I was around last year and then, but there's no snow last yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. No, it was horrible, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm not going to close those doors. I never know. I. Right now, I'm super happy doing what I'm doing, and I definitely love I love being in the mountains and love exploring. I, I have so much to learn mm-hmm. in the mountains before I could do something like that, but yeah, why not? I'm never going to say yeah. never, but right now, right now, it's not going to really happen, but hopefully down the road. Cool. I'm I'm up for it for sure. <laughs> right on. Um, I want to get back to salute a little bit. Um, you had a bunch of people on the movie with you, uh, a good crew. Um, talk about them. Give them some love. Who's on the movie with you? Yeah. So many of my idols. A lot of people that I haven't really shot with before, but been a super fan of and had good relationship with. So that was that's been really cool. Like 
Jakob Wester, who is like my one of my first idols went in free skiing. Like he introduced me to the sport and like showed me how sick this sport is from the very start. And we traveled together a lot, has been sponsored by similar sponsors and lived together at X Games together and been hanging out a lot, but never filmed together for the same movie project. So it was super cool to go to Chamonix and link up with him and do some filming for this project. As well as same with like Oysten Braton, I've been a good friend with and mainly just during competitions, we always had a really good vibe and could talk about anything and to get together with him for both in Chamonix and then in Riksgrans in Sweden was really, really cool. And then we, it's like Chris Logan, yeah, you shot who I shot a little bit. In Baker, right? Yeah, Baker and Jackson Hole. And me and Dark has been good friends for a long time and shot together his first year of filming with Level 1. But then after that, just been watching him and being a super fan of him and Parker, what they did with the big picture. And then, yeah, with Level 1 and all that as well. But I hadn't filmed with him for a long time, so it was really great to get together with him as well. He's a beauty. And then he's such a beauty. Yeah, he, I love that guy. He is so so awesome and so good on skiing and so motivated and yeah, awesome human in general. As well as Carl Fosfett, who also I've been a fan of and have talked with a little bit here and there whenever our paths have crossed, but never filmed with him before and he was able to be with us together in baker and jackson as well and he definitely added some flavor and spice to the flick as well and then to get together with like the original step crew clayton villa cam riley and then isaac sokol behind the camera was a dream like i had shot a few urbans and like been skiing parks with cam and clayton before but it probably had been like six years since last time oh yeah and and it was super super cool that they were able to take their time and come out to minnesota together with me and just put a full og step vibe to it is there um i know you so you said that um because of COVID, right? A lot of the a lot of your spring plans kind of got shut down. Was that kind of more of a big mountain kind of focus? That was going to be like hopping on the sleds and getting into the backcountry. What were your plans for for the spring when that kind of fell apart? Yeah, definitely. We had like a big window for British Columbia that we were planning to do, like all basically from half of March and all of April. We were going to be there. And then we also had a big park shoot planned in Andorra. That was going to be like super cool because we were everybody that had filmed in the project were supposed to go there. And we were oh, cool. It was supposed to be like a big like season finale and like the whole everybody from the step crew as well, like the production, like cameras. And like we were supposed to like have like a big like park shoot. And it's a big collective that, session, kind of like a, like those those are, those are like the Kimbo sessions, right? Where everyone gets together and like it's just yeah. a, it's just a good time. Everyone's kind of yeah. pushing each other to do a little bit better, right? It's that fun little rivalry, that sort of thing. Uh huh. And then uh, depending, we we definitely had plans to go to Mont Hood to do some spring like side country filming and other places. Like it was gonna a little bit depend on what the snow situation was going to be at that time for May and June. But so you're planning, luckily, you're planning I, to shoot right into the summer. Yeah. Our plan was to go until June 10 and then fly straight to LA for the first editing uh, trip. Straight to the cave, the editing cave. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of those plans then that didn't happen, are you just going to like 
bank them and hold on to them? So are they part of those, like that focus that you were talking about at the beginning of the conversation where you're like, all right, I have this focus for what I want to do. And is it just, you're just going to put it on the shelf or is it something that's going to bother you? Like I need to go there next year and do this thing that's been on my mind. Cause I couldn't get to do it. Like, because you weren't able to, do you want it more? Uh, no, not more, because uh, it's already at the max. I want it so badly, so then if I want it more, I don't know if that's even... I don't have the word for that, but... Yeah, I I use no for sure. I, I definitely, because I never really did the springtime up in British Columbia, and it was Chris Logan that like was talking really good about it and saying that like I'm going to really love that. So it's for sure something that I definitely want to do in the future. And yeah, man, you, you love it. I'm, it's, I'm not, I'm not necessarily like stressing, like it has to happen next year. Cause it didn't happen this year. But it's, yeah, it's one of those I know, things that you're like, I know it, yeah, I'm going to get there. I want it, yeah, I know what you mean. It will happen for sure. Like I, yeah. Would you, I'm just going to like follow like whatever the snow situation and conditions is that particular year. And, just keep shredding and trying to progress my skiing no matter what. This might actually be the year. They're calling for a little La Nina out here, which usually means cold and wet. And then uh, yeah, huh? if you still have to quarantine, it might even still be worth it. Go get, go like fly into a hut for 14 days and quarantine in a, in a, in a hut somewhere. Yeah. Sled out to a hut. I'm all about that. Sled out to a hut and hang out. But yeah, don't look, CeeLo's been up here a few times, usually just uh, based out of Pemberton. And then from there, man, it's like endless. It's absolutely, yeah. it's absolutely endless, right? And the crew that lives in that area, like Kai and Abma and Macintosh and everybody up there, they'd be like, all right, sweet, Henrik's here. We're going to take him some spots. Yeah. And that's the key, too, because you should. I would love that. You showing up would fire everyone else up, too. They'd be like, oh, Henrik's in town. Like, you know, they're good. It's funny because even like we were talking about people being fans of each other, like skiers are fans of each other, right? These guys know who you are. They're gonna be like, Oh sweet. I want to go and ski with Henrik for a couple of days. I'm going to show him my zone. Right. Do you find when you go to most places like that, people are like, Oh sweet. I'm going to take you to this spot. That's kind of the benefit, I guess for you is like everybody wants to ski with you and they want to show you their secret spots because you're only there for a short amount of time and they want to see what you can do with it. Yeah. No, for sure. I'm I'm just so appreciative of anybody that wants to share any of their secrets or their favorite places. Like, I I think it's so cool when you can do that. And yeah, I'm so thankful of everybody that is like helping and want to share anything with me. And I love to do that back to them as well. But always feels crazy, like like what you you're saying that like people that I admire and like are so idolizing and inspired by that they can like even be a fan of me feels so crazy. I'm like still, I'm still just stuck with being a little kid that is like looking up to everybody else. And like when I hear people give me props or like give me amazing words, it's just, it's like, Ooh, I can't almost like not really even take it in because I don't believe it yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get that nice, that nice humble element to you, man. Um, another thing we have to talk about is your clothing line just dropped. What yesterday? Two days ago. Two days ago, Henrik or was it Harlow Apparel, man? Tell me about that. How did that come about? Was that just a, one of those things on the airplane where it's in your head and you're like, all right, I gotta, I gotta do this. No, I think it was originally just sparked as, at a very young age. Me and my brothers, we would always do like skateboard videos or like ski videos. And then always, since we didn't even have any sponsors or anybody supporting, we would create our own little brands and like have that be in the presenting sponsors. Oh, really? And like in school, whenever you have like sewing class, whatever, you would always make apparel that was like yeah that brand no way so and like in, in like high school when you're doing like like home ec we call it here you'd be like you teach the sew and you'd be like i'm just gonna make myself a giant pair of ski pants or yeah or skate not pants. necessarily like uh yeah more like sweatpants caps hats and i think i made 
yeah some stuff like that yeah so it, uh, so it got started by you making your own gear that's pretty that's cool man yeah so it started by that originally and then uh just being pretty particular with what i wearing like just really liking the baggy like oversized clothing and then i didn't have a clothing sponsor for like two years and i would just ride with anything that i thought was cool looking and would buy a lot of stuff from ebay and yeah all the like basically from a few years earlier where the bigger size was more like common so like yeah old vintage clothing for the most part and then uh you started started building like my own brand within like other companies at first like making sure that it was like a harlow henry harlow because i had so many signatures like with skis boots goggles and like all this and then from that just me and my brother basically was like well we should just do it do it ourselves so <laughs> let's is, just do it it's is, like is he a partner uh in the business then with you yeah it's me my brother and my father and yeah it's like i was saying like since we started from a young age it's both of our big dreams that we just love doing and it's like a passion and it's so cool and it's so sick to see my brother too like he is working like crazy for this like he is at the we have a little office right now as a little studio and he's there every day from he's there eight in the morning and leaves at like eight at night there in the weekends like i've like he used to be a really good skier as well both alpine and free skier and he was definitely passionate about that but you could see that he didn't really have the same passion for it that maybe i had like i was definitely like more goal oriented than he was within skiing but now with a clothing brand it's so sick to see because he is like more passionate about this than i ever seen him in his life and it's just like every day like sending me like different like ideas of new product different designs and like he is like on it at all times and it's so sick and i think that's what's really showing and it's it's awesome it's so fun that's rad so are you are you doing like a limited run of things just so you're like all right with you don't want to like overproduce right are you because you're still fairly new it's a couple of years that you've been doing this now yeah exactly and that too like we don't have a storage to be able to like mass produce right now so you're kind of happy like to just, everything kind of happy to just sell everything out and it's better to yeah it's better to sell out than to have things left over i guess right so you don't have to like overshoot budgets or be left with you know without exactly you know. and in general just like to not produce like unnecessarily a mount just for anything like yeah yeah no waste no exactly does your dad but yeah every everything is right now all in the same like the same uh, unit like all the storage the shipment like my brother does all that like and, and it's sick so it's super super close but it's sick when um it's, how did the launch go because you had the little count i saw the countdown clock how did the launch go did it is it is it doing well amazing yeah it, it's yeah. i'm like baffled like i can't believe the all the support and love that everybody is showing us and it's it's the wickedest feeling ever to like each line like we usually do like a fall winter spring summer line like do a little collections and every line so far has been like a little bit better than the re than the previous one and this one has been the best launch so far and it's like the most the the coolest or like the yeah the most special launch launch for me in a way since it's like the first one 
with really like outerwear, like ski, like our first ski pants and jackets and, and just also like a bit almost in a way, like some would say like a risky move with what we're doing with the pants. Like we're fully going in for like exactly the style that I love and like many people love, but like the way other brands have been pushing is like tighter and slimmer pants. And we go in like the complete opposite, like just the yeah. the biggest <laughs> pants you've basically seen. Do you- and to see the, the support from that, like now it's two days, I think since we launched and we almost already sold out out of all of them. Wow. Even though we like, yeah, we have like 15 pair of black pants left this morning wow and wow that's really impressive man congratulations and that that just shows like the influence that you have on not only the kids but like the whole the industry like this is the this is the influence you as a person and as a skier holds on these people that you're able to change and almost dictate style which is really exactly does your dad wear the pants not yet because uh (laughs) He haven't gone skiing since we produced them, but he he's gonna he's gonna have to. <laughs> do, do you have? Are there like um, do you have the suspenders like built into them? No, they they not. But it's pretty cool because we did we tried experimenting with something that I thought about for a long time, and it's to make the the crutch longer, so you actually don't have to like wear them as low like on your hips but they still have the crutch down because for me let's extend it right because you like having it low so it doesn't get in the way but that i like having it low just to not i hate when your hoodie or your jacket is long enough that's like just two legs sticking out and no crutch in between yeah yeah that's like my my least favorite thing so that's (laughs) the main reason almost why have them so low because I have so big hoodies they have to be that low but now we extended that so I can like wear them a little bit higher I still wear suspenders just because it's awesome <laughs> and they can't fall down that way but <laughs> that's but now maybe that's the it, new accessory that, line for you guys the, the, the yeah. Harlow apparel suspender line yeah could be for sure but it's wicked, like the whole project too, like I definitely could have like the last two years signed with somebody for clothing and gotten a way bigger paycheck. But this just as an experience and like the feeling of doing something for the sport and like for the culture and like giving something to skiers that wants to have yeah, baggy big clothing is like it's like beyond, it's like way sicker to invest in something than get in something that doesn't mean anything. So, and hopefully like, who knows, like the goal is for sure to have it like come full circle. So I get something out of it as well. But right now it's just amazing to just and, and, do that as well. And I bet, you know, working with your family has got to be quite special too, right? Very much, very, very much. And just our relationship in general like like i'm saying like when i'm gone out skiing i a lot of times just don't even really go on the phone or go on the computer at all like because i again like don't switch off that focus kind of thing so i'm just like doing whatever is the best to perfect my skiing but like within this my relation with my family has gone like way closer and better. So now I talk with them at least like once a week instead of once every third month. (laughs) Oh, wow. Well, that's awesome. That looks like it's a a win, 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 win. Lots of wins. Win, win, win. Uh, Yeah, exactly. uh, uh, So this episode is probably going to come out in like, um, oh, like a couple weeks, three, about a month maybe from now, just because we want to, correspond this episode with the salute movie uh if there's any apparel items left where can people go to find them either at 
harlowapparel.co or henrikharlow.com. Awesome. Now, are you like when you're like developing the uh, like the 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 what do you call it? Like the what's the word I'm looking for? Like the pattern when you're like developing yeah. like the pattern and stuff. Are you like in there on the sewing machine still? Or are you and your brothers they're still like figuring stuff out? Like, do you have like a pair of pants? And you're like, I don't like this, and you hop on the sewing machine and like adjust it a little bit. Are you that in depth with it now? I would be, but skiing. We like what? No, but I like from the beginning. I just had some old pants that I thought was like super nice, and then just we would just measure like every different thing, and then you're seeing like what could be improved. Like, and I think it's it's so crazy because these pants though is our first edition, and it's like bullseye <laughs> basically for me like for me and everybody else that i know that I have skied with the pants it's like they're so nice because they're so light and they keep and they still keep like that good shape yeah like they're not not too light that like when you ski they like flap around just blow like a drrr, yeah. no exactly it still has that shape and it's yeah, like, and so many people with different styles can wear as long as you, like, wear, wants to wear bigger pants. But, like, Hugo Burval, a friend from Sweden that's on the Swedish team, doesn't necessarily have, like, a big, baggy, wide style. So he wears them up at his waist, but they look so nice. It's like a full-on, like, 90s skate, skateboard style. We're a little bit shorter of a top and big pants at the bottom. And so I think it doesn't only go for one one particular style necessarily. I, I think a lot of different styles can wear them and yeah, it's it's wicked. Sick. Um, I have to, for all the people that have been asking to get you on the show for a long time, I have to ask you a Wu-Tang question. Are you going to be sending any of the boys at Wu-Tang a pair of pants? I will try. <laughs> well, I won't be selling them, but I will. That's what I'm saying. Just say, just, just mail them, mail them some pants, man. Maybe they'd be stoked. Yeah, that's yeah for real. Like if if any of them for sure, if they ever come to Aspen for or any ski event for sure, that would be the dream to see them rock that up on, on stage up on or stage. anything. Yes, yeah. <laughs> sick. That's all. That would be a big dream, but maybe a little far away, but yeah. Uh, you never know. Yeah. Got to have big dreams. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's probably, you know, a good spot to leave it off for right now, man. Thank you so much for your time. Um, what do you got coming up in the next little bit here? Winter is uh, still a month or two away for us out here in North America, but you guys have been skiing. What have you got planned in the next uh, couple of weeks here? I just have a plan in general for this season to really, really progress my skiing because like like we've been talking about like going from contest to filming it's like sometimes hard to like really push it beyond and to like a next level because you you just have a certain amount of tries or yeah one run and you want to like stick what what you got to the fullest but obviously like you see points where you can perfect it or progress it but this coming season i don't really have any big movie projects planned definitely going to be filming like edits and if it's snowing in the city i will be skiing street skiing if it's snowing in the mountains i'll do backcountry but i just want to be super free and like ski a lot ski a lot of park and like just be repeti repetition on repetition and like just go and like really try perfect or progress my skiing. Is is now kind of the time? Because what Olympics are not this year, but next year they're supposed to be. I guess is now when you're starting to think about Olympics. Is that something that's on your mind, like as a focus? Like, all right, now we get two, you're two years out. I got to start focusing on that now. Or is that? It's definitely a big focus and a goal, but 
I th- I think I'm just kind of like that all time. I just want to do whatever I can to better my skiing, no matter what. Even if it's a Olympics or if it's a movie project or anything like that, it's it's pretty much all the same. I'm just gonna, no matter what, try get the full potential of my skill right now. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. I can only imagine you winning a gold medal in the big air and everyone in Sweden becoming aware of Henrik Harlow apparel and everybody stops wearing things like Nerona and peak performance and then every time you go to Sweden you get all these hot blonde girls walking around these massive baggy pants maybe that maybe you'll yeah. be able to change the culture in your, in your country <laughs> you, you never... that would be the ultimate dream <laughs> I never even thought about that that far but that that for sure but it's cool in, in Sweden, actually, right now, when you go to Stockholm in the city, there's a lot of people, like girls and and kids and boys and everything, they all got pretty big pants these days. <laughs> like, baggy pants is for sure a thing in Stockholm right now. Bring in the 90s like, style short, back, right? 100%. Like, I was there, like, a few weeks ago with a friend from Switzerland, Isaac uh, Simon, East Panda. He's a skier, too. And he was like, he couldn't believe, he was so stoked. He was like, everybody here has style. <laughs> everybody, I look there, it's style, it's style. Everybody. And I was, and I was the same kind of like, yeah, true, this is insane. Like, people are getting back to it. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that was a, a prophetic statement then. We'll see what happens in two years when you win that gold medal and everyone starts going crazy. You're going to have to open a factory for those pants, man. Yeah, <laughs> make street pants as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, awesome, man. Also, uh, tell people what they got to know about Salute. Yeah, what you got to know just is that the movie is releasing on November 10th. It's going to be filled with spectacular maneuvers <laughs> from awesome skiers, some wicked places. And yeah, you can... I think it's a good watch if you want to be inspired and get motivated to go out and ski and do your thing. Absolutely. Well, this and this episode is going to be out right before it, I believe. This is going to be out, I think, on the 5th of November. Your movie comes out on the 10th, so we're going to hype that up for you. And we are looking into putting on a premiere for you guys here in Whistler. I found a way. Uh, so me and Raf are going to talk about that, and we're gonna we're gonna set that up for you guys. So we'll give you uh, we'll give you guys a heads up when that happens, and uh, you know, get, give us a shout out, and we'll get people out to the out to the movies for you. Sick! Thank you so much. My pleasure. And also, just uh, as we're speaking about it, I just want to take the time to just thank and yeah, I'm so so thankful and appreciated for everybody that was on the journey of making salute and like being behind the scene in front of the camera, behind the camera production, like everything. Like it's so many people that has been involved in making this piece happen. So I'm very, very thankful for everybody that they took the time and yeah. Salute. Thank you. Awesome. Salute, buddy. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Peace, peace. You've been listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. This has been a Redmark Media production.